Hello, everyone. My name is Pratap, and I'm going to talk to you about printing photographs on paper. So I don't have any photographs to display here. Uh, my photographs are on display outside. So after this, you guys are going to have a tea break. I hope that's reason enough to stick through for the next 20 minutes. I won't take long. Uh, so I'm going to share some insights that I've uh, gained over the past few years uh, when I first bought my printer and started printing myself. So I'd like to start with a question. Can you show me your hands and tell me how many of you here saw your first photograph on a piece of paper instead of, instead of on a screen? OK. I'm not trying to find your age or anything here. <laughs> but it's just that I've realized I am that old that there is a whole generation of people who have probably never seen a photograph on paper. Okay. So we live in the age of visual saturation. Just to throw some numbers at you, almost 2 million photographs are uploaded to Flickr every day. And the top two camera brands uh, that are used to upload photos onto Flickr are the iPhone, are actually mobile phones, the iPhone and Samsung. Not intending to start a brand war here, but it's just that you know the top two uh, cameras that are used today are actually phones, mobile phones. So the fact is that uh, digital is omnipresent, right? Almost everyone owns a smartphone, so automatically we are all photographers. And uh, Facebook is actually home to 220 billion photos. You know that's more than the Library of Congress, which houses only 14 million photos. And this is a statistic that I pulled out from the Nikon uh, website. So. You know, in this world of digital, what, do you, what does photographic expression mean? And how do you find photographic expression on paper? So let me first try and uh, explain what I mean by photographic expression. So it's nothing but the intent of the photographer, his thoughts and emotions that he's trying to convey to his or her audience. So this is, this is uh, a simple definition of photographic expression. And how do you achieve this expression as a photographer? So uh, the three pillars of photography, the way I see it, is one is the art of photography. And this is where uh, you have your vision and your talent. And many talented photographers have come before me on the stage and presented their work. And then you have the science of photography, where uh, you know, you, your photography technique, your, uh, the quality of images that you produce, you know, that's, that's another pillar of photography. And the third pillar is the marketing aspect where you market your uh, photos to reach a wider audience. But I see that in today's world, these three pillars are kind of rearranged. Any guesses which pillar is more popular than the other? The marketing aspect of it. So we live in the age of Facebook, Flickr, Finet, PX. These are all actually mediums of marketing your work, right? If you really want to grow as a photographer, then some of the steps or some of the ways of growing is through self-critique, uh, working towards a goal, like how Dinesh had his uh, theme of portraits of mother, seeking feedback from mentors, and last but not the least, making mistakes. Making mistakes while shooting, making mistakes after you shoot. So that's how you learn. A good photographer is someone who consistently creates works of art. He's not a photographer who is a one-hit wonder, you know, just accidentally in the right place at the right time 
happen to have a camera on him, shoot something, and become popular. He should be able to consistently create works of art. So where does printing come into all of this? If you have had any experience with prints, then all of this would be true. Prints fade, right? Remember your childhood photos, uh, the small ones that your parents took of you as a child. They're all probably yellow and faded right now. Prints are expensive, which is why we all bought digital cameras, right? It's difficult, I mean, it's expensive to print. Prints are hard to share, which is why, you know, we have, we upload fo uh, photos to all these social media websites because it's just easy to click share and share your photos. And printing requires learning new technology. It's not as easy as just trying to, uh, you know, just clicking the print button and firing off a print like how you would do uh, if you had a sheet of paper to print. Printing photographs actually require you to learn new technology. So in spite of all these drawbacks, I'd like to change the conversation a little and talk about why these uh, negative aspects of printing are actually its strengths. So the truth is that the shelf life of anything digital is actually much shorter than that of a print. How many of you can easily locate the very first photographs that you took with your, with your digital camera? I'm sure it's lost somewhere in your computer hard drive. So computers are actually jack of all trades. You know, when you're looking uh, or you're working on your computer, it's, it's meant to be used for different purposes. And storing photos is just one of it. I personally feel that photographs are best stored in albums, physical albums, and kept in a safe place, which is how you should store anything that is precious to you, anything that's precious to you as a memory or as a work of art. And if you think prints are expensive, then it's good, because expensive means more attention. You pay attention to that every print that you fire off. And even though printing is a difficult medium to share, the joy of gifting or selling a print is very, very immense. Trust me on that. And uh, you know, if you actually happen to frame one of your print and gift it to someone, or you've see, seen your own print hanging somewhere, the joy that you get from that is, is really great. And Last but not the least, anything that's difficult, anything that you need to learn is actually a good thing because learning is the basis of growing. So when you print your photos, you actually uh, go through this mental process of filtering out all the noise, all the uh, positive feedback that you've got from people and actually focusing on the very best because you want to print your very best. So you start uh, creating this discipline in, inside you where your mind is shut off from all the outside noise and you are looking at your photographs and selecting the ones that are best to print. And this way you spend more time perfecting your art rather than marketing. So, you know, we all have this, uh, this, this, uh, we all want to share our photographs the instant we take it. And today it's very easy to do that with a share button or with an upload button built into every app. But when you actually get into printing, you're spending more time uh, looking at your photographs and studying your photographs than spending time marketing your photographs. And you start thinking in terms of narrating stories. So uh, let me give a little bit of background to this. So when I actually started uh, printing my photographs, the first uh, thought that occurred to me was, how am I going to group these individual prints? You know, what kind of uh, albums do I make? Do I stick to the uh, most popular genres like landscape photography, nature photography, wildlife photography? Or do I start creating uh, albums based on stories that I want to tell? So, you know, I slowly started thinking in terms of how to narrate uh, my work uh, in, 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 in a more concrete way, that rather than just uh, randomly printing photographs which, have, which are not connected to each other. 
So when you start printing, you actually start uh, visualizing how you want these photos to be presented, how you want them to be grouped, how you want your audience to uh, perceive these photographs. And uh, you start working towards a tangible end goal. So the print that you hold in your hand is actually a tangible end goal, as against uh, something that you just uh, put somewhere on the internet and hope for the very best. Uh, nobody has been able to crack uh, the 500px popular algorithm or the Flickr explore algorithm, or uh, nobody knows why certain uh, people get a lot of likes on Facebook. These are not really tangible end goals, but holding a print in your hand is a tangible end goal. And you start working towards that end goal when you start printing your photographs. And lastly, uh, over a period of time, uh, your photographs become uh, a measure of your growth as a photographer. So when I look at the photographs that I printed five, seven, five, six years back, uh, I see a lot of change in myself. I see how I've grown, uh, uh, how I see the world around me, how I approach my photography. So uh, here I have a measure of growth of myself as a photographer. And lastly, I think uh, printing photographs shows uh, your dedication towards your art. It shows that you're serious about uh, your photography. Uh, and uh, you know, things are not accidental in nature. So uh, you know, these are some of the reasons why I think uh, all photographers should, at some point of time, print uh, their photographs. So the satisfaction of uh, seeing your prints, your photos in print, is really immense. So let's come to some specific details, where to print photos. So you basically have two choices. One is home printing, and the other is professional printing. So let's look at some positives and negatives of both of these aspects, or, or both of these places where you can print your photos. So the, some of the positive aspects of printing at home is you have, uh, I mean, it's much quicker because uh, all you have to do is uh, have a file ready to print and then just fire the print and then you have uh, immediate feedback on how the print looks like. And uh, you know, it's only when you start printing do all those megapixels that you invested in, all those awesome lenses, the expensive lenses, the f2.8 lenses, all that, the high ISO performance of your camera, all that actually starts making sense only when you start looking at your prints because like uh, you know, Sapna mentioned in her intro, prints are much less forgiving than uh, what you see on the screen. So that kind of feedback uh, is quite instant. Many times I've printed my photos, not happy with the out, uh, outcome, go back, uh, reprocess it, or change the composition, change the cropping a little, and then print again. So you know, this, this, is, this is a form of self-critique. This is a dialogue that you're having with yourself. And uh, it's, it's much more secure because uh, your files, your high resolution files are not sitting on someone else's computer. You're not transmitting it through the net. It's, it's very much on your computer. Uh, it's certainly expensive, which is a slightly uh, you know, negative aspect because uh, uh, most uh, uh, printer, printer manufacturers, they make money from uh, selling you ink rather than selling you the printer itself. So it's like having an expensive car. You end up paying for the petrol. And uh, you are limited by the technology that you, you either own or you can afford. Uh, for example, if I want to print a panorama of uh, a very large size, then I cannot afford a printer of that size, and it does not make sense for me to uh, invest in such a printer. And uh, the quality sometimes is not as good as uh, when you go to a professional, because a professional definitely would have uh, a printer which is capable of printing uh, a much better quality. So what are the positives of uh, printing outside? One is uh, much better quality. And this is assuming that the printer really knows how to uh, work his uh, printer. He, he knows how to work his machine. A lot of uh, printers sometimes invest in good quality machines, but uh, they, they lack the technical skills to bring the best out of it. Uh, this is known to happen. Uh, you have more paper choices when you go outside because the printer, uh, obviously, because he's running a commercial unit, he might have uh, more choices of uh, pr uh, paper. And you have a larger product variety. So you don't, you don't just have to print on um, sheets of paper. You can print photo books. You can print uh, in different sizes. You can print uh, on t-shirts, mugs, etc. So obviously, you have more uh, product variety there. 
on the on the negative on the other hand it's a little time consuming because uh, you're dependent on a third party and it's less secure you don't know what that guy is going to do with your file unless you know him well and uh, it's certainly less satisfying because um, there's someone else who's actually producing your work as against you doing it yourself and uh, remember some of the greatest uh, landscape photographers of our times have actually been uh, very good uh, printers as well and Ansel Adams uh, comes to my mind uh, he actually uh, spent a lot of time in the dark room uh, printing his photographs and uh, the kind of notes that he has made to produce each print is, is something that photographers use as a reference even today. Uh, so how do you get started if you want to print your photos? Uh, first of all, you need to learn how to prepare your photos for print, uh, which means uh, you have to, uh, you know, the way you process your photos, the way you expose in the field, uh, your, your, the very basic approach that you have to photography should uh, should be with the end quality, the quality of your print in mind. So, uh, and there's also all this mumbo jumbo about color spaces, about sharpening, about resolution, and all of that that you need to know. And uh, you need to be able to shortlist your best photos, and uh, this is a very humbling, time-consuming, and uh, uh, demanding process. You know, you have to. Uh, uh, you have to keep, uh, you know, this is, this is a process where it takes time. It's not just uh, you would just fire off uh, prints and print all your photos at once. And uh, you need to identify a competent printer who uses the best and latest uh, available technology, or you need to invest in your own printer and uh, learn the art of printing. So these are some fundamental steps to help you get started. Uh, if you have questions, you can meet me outside and we can talk about it. And uh, what are the different types of uh, printing technology in the market? Uh, first is uh, the chromogenic print, which is a traditional way of uh, using negatives or slides and uh, exposing uh, and getting uh, the, the photograph on paper. Then there's a lambda or light jet print, which uses a digital exposure system, which is what most photo labs use. So if you go to a photo lab and you give your uh, photos for print and you, they use a continuous tone uh, printer, which, uh, which, which, uh, which uses traditional photographic paper and emulsion process. And then there is the inkjet printing uh, technology, which is, which is uh, what uh, I use personally. And in this, uh, small drops of ink are sprayed onto special paper, paper which has a special coating. And uh, th this, this, uh, the, uh, the advantage of this technology is that it is available both to the home user and to the professional user. So you have printers, uh, printing machines that can be used uh, you know, you can use it at home and yet produce professional quality prints. And then you have uh, cameras like uh, the Polaroid or the Fuji, Fuji uh, Instax, uh, which uses a photogram technology which has a light sensitive paper. So the moment you expose the uh, f a paper to light, uh, the photograph uh, develops by itself. And then lastly, you have the gelatin silver process, which is a traditional black and white uh, emulsive process. So of all these uh, technologies available in the market today, uh, inkjet printing is king. Uh, and uh, uh, this is the best uh, type of technology which is used, uh, which can be used both at home and uh, professionally outside. Uh, so inkjet uh, printing can actually be uh, done on different types of uh, media, not necessarily just paper. You can print on t-shirts, on CDs, on... Um, uh, uh, on different types of fabric, on mugs, etc. And uh, the sizes are also different. Um, you have printers that can print up to, uh, you know, home printers can print up to 13 by 19 inches. And uh, it can start from as small as 4 by 6. And uh, worldwide, inkjet print printing is the number one choice for uh, fine art photographers. And inkjet printing is a technology that is used by photographers who uh, display their photographs in uh, world famous galleries. And inkjet printing is a technology that uh, is actually certified for its longevity. So inkjet prints are certified for uh, a longevity of uh, say 100 years or 200 years, which means that if you print uh, the photograph using uh, uh, a certain type of ink and paper, then it's guaranteed to not fade for 100 or 200 years. Because uh, if, you're a, if you're a fine art photographer who's selling your art uh, in, a, in a commercial environment, 
then the person who's buying your art should, uh, sh should have a guarantee that the print is not going to fade away in a few years, which means then his investment will go for a waste. So inkjet printing actually gives you that guarantee that uh, the, the print will not fade for 100 or 200 years, which is why it's called ar as archival printing because of its archival nature. Uh, so yeah, the great quality, the sharpness is excellent, much more, uh, sh the prints that come out are much sharper than prints that you would get from a normal lab outside and uh, the longevity that we just saw. And uh, the choices of uh, paper for inkjet printing is huge. Most of us would have just heard of glossy and matte paper, but in the world of inkjet printer, you have papers with ha which have a different, uh, I mean, different types of texture. You have art paper, you have cotton rag paper, you have pearl paper, you have semi-pearl, you have barietta paper, you have papers uh, that have different kinds of look and feel, and you can, uh, this, when you, when you pick a paper that best suits your work, you kind of create a signature style. Uh, so you know these are th this this this, uh, this is a vast field that you can explore the different types of paper avail available for inkjet printing, which is not avail available in other technologies that we saw earlier. So uh, I'm just throwing uh, the floor open for thoughts and questions. Either you can ask me now, or you can ask me outside uh, during the tea break.